Hello, this is a tutorial that's kind of like an update on one of the Google app products, and that is the Google Hangouts and Hangouts on Air. Periodically, Google goes through a process where they update one or more apps. Not a lot of fanfare. There's generally not a lot of communication. One day you come in and something looks a little bit different, and you've probably noticed that over the last week or two, and I'll kind of show you where you might be able to see that, and maybe you'll have the aha moment that I did that they've made some modifications. So the, there are some tutorials out there already uh, on the Google Hangout and Hangouts on Air, and overall that would still work, but because there's a couple of different looking screens, I didn't want anybody to be confused, so I'm kind of doing an update to my Google Hangouts and Hangouts on Air uh, tutorials I've created in the past. So there's actually a couple of different places where you can launch Hangouts, and let me briefly, again, in case you did not see the other videos, let me briefly demonstrate or explain to you the difference and then demonstrate between Google Hangouts and Hangouts on Air. They're basically the same thing except for one key difference. Hangouts on Air allows you to archive or capture and save the entire event. So think of Google Hangouts kind of as Google's version of WebEx. Um, it's kind of a web launch where you can share items on your screen, all kinds of items from documents to videos to websites. You can collaborate together with people from a distance um, all over the globe. All they need is to have an internet access and a webcam is actually helpful, but at the very least the ability to have microphones and so forth, assuming that you want uh, the other participants to communicate. So Google Hangouts allows you to actually conduct this web conference session, but you do not have the ability to capture anything that's on there. So once you log off, it's done and there's no evidence that it actually took place, but you do have the ability with Hangouts on Air if there's a reason for you to capture this material and have it for posterity. You would get access to that through your YouTube account hooked up with your Google account and that's where it will store uh, your uh, copy, your video, if you will, of the particular presentation. So one of the ways um, that you can do it, if you have in your Gmail, in your Baker Gmail, if you have kind of your chat feature set up over here where all kinds of people that you chat and then you can tell whether they're online or not by uh, the fact that they have uh, a little green dot versus red dot, they have an away message and then people who are not online down here uh, as well. So I can actually from just cl clicking onto this video webcam icon, I can actually launch one from here. I click on this and I get my hangout window here and I can instantly create a hangout chat right from this particular uh, perspective. Um, it allows me to run it right here. I have the ability to check whether or not uh, it's, I'm going to allow some outside people because you're going to invite people with their Baker College email address and if you need to have an outsider, like maybe there's a guest speaker that's going to participate and they do not have an at baker.edu, you want to then allow uh, outsiders to get access to this material. you got to think about that based on what you're going to share on your screen. And so I would uh, identify the person by email that I'm going to uh, uh, put my wife in here. She's at work anyway, so she won't get this. But you just would enter an email address for a person, uh, multiple people. You can keep adding people in here. Once you have that person in here, you're good to go. And then you would just say invite. So if you were ready to start this right now, uh, the invitation has been posted. So she would get an email, and all she'd have to do is say, you've been invited to a Google Hangout. You click join. Okay, so at this particular point, I'm going to close out of this because there is another way uh, to do this. I think it's a little bit uh, easier, a little bit more practical. So again, from the Gmail uh, window, because I think that's generally where we are a lot of times when we're in Baker. Uh, you want to make sure that you have your Google Plus account created. And the way that you will tell that is to the left of the Google Waffle, which is what this is, looks like a little checkerboard. That's a list of your Google Apps. You should see your name here. If it says you, Y-O-U, that means you have not set up your Google um, G+, your Google Plus account, and you need to do that. It takes about 30 seconds, so it's not a big deal. But assuming that you see your name, your first name here, that means you're set up, and all you need to do is go over here, 
And probably, if you remember what these looked like two weeks ago, this is the Google search. That's Gmail. G Plus looks different. A lot of these other ones look the same as far as the icon goes. But here's our G Plus, our Google Plus, and that's where you need to go to launch a Hangout. Now, there's a couple of different things that are kind of new here. Generally, what I used to show you before is over here in my Google Plus page, I would go to this down Chevron, the home area, and come all the way down here to Hangouts. And this would allow me to launch the Hangouts splash page. And there's my video Hangouts and Hangouts on Air. The problem now in the new version is if I go to Video Hangouts and I haven't set up a Hangout already, whether it's to start, uh, you know, like shortly, it's to start another day. So I plan it out because you have the ability to establish a Hangout a few days from now, a week from now, whatever. You can plan it ahead of time and send out the invites. Uh, that has to be done a different way now than it does um, from the previous tutorial that I created. Hangouts on Air works the same, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on Hangouts on Air. You can watch the previous video to see basically how that is, create a Hangout on Air. That part is pretty much the same. But as far as the video Hangouts piece, um, if I start a video Hangout, it's going to ask me for what's the name of my Hangout. Well, I don't know what it is because I haven't created it yet. I need to create that. So the best way to do it is to go to the same spot, but instead of going down to Hangout, go to Events. And once the Events page loads, you can get Plan a Hangout right here. So I click on Plan a Hangout. I need to give it a title because then when I want to go back to it and pull it up later, I can go back to the um, Video Hangout button that, I, that was there on the previous screen, and it will allow me to have a list of what Hangouts I have titled already, and then go to that appropriate one. So Bob Flint Test 3, or Best Flint, Flint Test uh, 3 is what I'm going to call this. I have a particular time set up here. Uh, let's say 5 p.m. and that's today's date. I could change this date and time to anything in the future. I can add an end time if I want to kind of make this auto or limit it to a certain time. If I add an end time, let's say 6 o'clock, this is going to automatically hang up my call at 6 o'clock. So I don't normally do an end time unless I specifically know that the end time is definitely going to be after whatever it is that I'm going to record or uh, have as part of my web conference presentation. Uh, it's a Hangout Online. I can put some details in here if I want, but again, I'm just going to go back and I'm going to add, uh, send myself an email so that I can get myself into this Hangout. So I'm going to send myself an email, and here's where it says restricted to Baker College. This post won't be shared with users outside of Baker College. I can allow external sharing. So then this will come to me, and I just say invite. And then that invite is going to happen on, well, i got to get my phone there. And so here we are, um, we're, we're launching this time. And because we're talking about it being like four or five minutes before five o'clock, it hasn't started yet. If I set this to start like right at, right at this time, I would have the ability to launch it yet. Now I'm going to get access to my phone here and be ready to accept my invitation. Okay, so it's now five o'clock and it's ready to start my event. And I can say join Hangout right here. And I will launch. I will launch this event, and let me shrink down my screen to the size that's going to be appropriate, so I can join my event here. You're the first one here. And so I'm going to say join. And then I'm looking on my uh, smartphone now, and uh, I do have the link has been sent to me for me to join as that outside person I'm inviting. But before I do that, I just wanted to show you two things. I do have the ability to invite people again. So if I thought of somebody else that I want to add, or while the conference, the web conference is going, I can add additional people, invite additional people who then would get an email invitation and would have to say join. And if I wanted to just send this link, 
This is the permanent link to this particular um, uh, session. And so any time that the session is running and live, that particular link would allow people to get in there. So if uh, you wanted to just attach it to a document, ship it out to a bunch of people um, that are part of maybe a distribution list rather than individually entering everybody's uh, name, you can do that. So I'm going to go ahead and launch my, uh, join my Hangout from my phone here. So that's just going to take me a second. To get this going. And the meeting's now started. Okay, so at this particular point, I'm going to not worry about this, uh, this message uh, here. Um, I could, as I said, I can invite other people. We have this layout here, and again, it's explained in my previous version, but I'll just briefly go through the toolbar. If ever you see these disappear, and they will after about 30 seconds of, of unuse, uh, this particular, if you hover your mouse, the, it'll tell you what things are. But the thing that looks kind of like a silhouette, head and shoulders of a person with a plus sign, this allows you to invite people. It'll get you this kind of message here where it has that link, and then you just type in the, the address of those people that you want to invite. And then you hit invite, and then your invitation is posted. If you are hosting this as kind of like the leader of the conference, this area here, the mute microphone and turn the video camera off are things that you may want to consider. Usually the video camera on is kind of nice. People will picture frame along the outside. The person who's on the other end, if you're one-to-one, -one, will be large. You will be down here in the bottom right corner. But generally people picture frame around the outside, kind of like thumbnails for as many people as you have on. You can have up to 10 people participating simultaneously. But I usually have uh, everybody else who's in the conference, I usually tell them if they would please mute their uh, microphone so that we don't have a lot of extraneous noise going on and all kinds of things that might disrupt what the main part of the presentation is and then you can allow them to uh, chime in when they have something to say. I don't mess with anything else over here. There's really nothing that you can do to add any value to your Google Hangout. The uh, red telephone here, this area here, allows you to leave the call and so if you're the host who started this thing and you leave the call, you've shut it down for everybody and anybody who's participating, if they need to leave before the end, they can just click there and they're gone. The other two tools that you're primarily going to use, really nothing else other than these, is at this particular point, one of the nice things is to turn on the chat feature, which is this blue button over here. And this is just like an instant message. Anybody can uh, type in the side. And then everybody gets to see that. You can see who the author is and see who the timing is. So it might be one of those things if you ask everybody to turn their microphone off or to mute their microphone, then you can have them use the chat feature in case anybody has a question and you as the presenter can periodically peer down in that chat area over to that right side to determine whether or not there might be a question that somebody has. So then you could pause and maybe then tell them, yeah, okay, Mary, go ahead, turn your microphone on and, you know, talk about, you know, what your issue is or what you want to present uh, or explain at that particular point or ask. So again, um, notice now after some inactivity on the screen, I just have to move my mouse either over to the left-hand side or to the right-hand side and my buttons pop up. The other thing that I have the ability to do from a presentation point of view and you as the lead presenter, the person who starts the web conference, or any of the other members of the web conference, have the ability to do this. And that is this green box right here with the arrow. It's, as you see, it says screen share. What that allows you to do is to show everybody else uh, maybe a, a screen that you have. So you might open up another window and maybe you have a website that you want to show them. You have a video, you have a document or an image. You can literally pull that up, share your screen, and then it tells you that you're sharing your screen. This is what that screen looks like, because again, this is you, as you can see down here. This is what everybody else is seeing on their particular screen. You still have the chat feature open. You still have access to all your tools. 
and uh, you're presenting this to everybody and you can then stop sharing and then you come back on on the screen uh, when uh, when you are done with that sharing so basically a lot of these things from the tools perspective were a little bit more of a review that hasn't really changed at all but just how you start a plain old video hangout there's the two ways you can start it through your chat feature or you can go to the events area so um, hopefully that's helpful to you and uh, you'll have a lot of fun using Google Hangout. Thank you.